Hi guys, uh, I know it's been a while since I did any type of vlog style uh, video, but you'll notice right off the bat that there's going to be a little bit of a difference to this one, because right off the bat you'll notice on the top, I didn't put the date like I usually did. It's because I don't want this one to expire so fast. I want to, I want the vlogs to actually mean something, so they'll be less frequent, but have more substance to them, so that, you know, if this video lasts a year or so, you can still watch it a year from now, and there's still something to be had. It's not just a bunch of outdated information. You know, I'm still going to relate them to things that I picked up, or things that are going on, and I'll still give you a little bit of update on what's happening around here, which... I guess the first priority is, you know, where's Plastic Attic, where is TJTV. Um, I, okay, I know most are very understanding about this. There are still a vocal minority that are making it really frustrating and really is robbing my desire to get those videos done. They don't realize how badly they actually hurt my efforts. But generally, you never want to ask a video producer where the next video is, because unless he has stated uh, what the delay is about, then he, does, he himself does not know where the video is. And if there is a reason behind it and he hasn't stated it, then it's usually a personal reason that he's not going to air publicly. The same is true here. It has been extremely stressful the last... I'd say last half year or so has been an absolute train wreck and it's it's been nothing but stress and drama and just crap I don't want to get into but needless to say you're not much in a funny mood when it happens so making fun of a bad toy or an old cartoon really doesn't have much priority anymore uh, don't you know, I'm still doing it. I'm still going to get it out when I can. Trust me, the delay frustrates me far more than it frustrates anyone out there. Because I do enjoy doing this. You know, I'm not... There's no reason to intentionally delay something I enjoy doing. So, there's no reason to think I'm holding it up on purpose or anything like that. It's just I don't have the time. They're big, complex videos, and it's impossible to do right now, unfortunately. Now, that's why I've been doing more of the convention stuff. The convention stuff's easy to edit and throw together. Which, you know, it's quality stuff. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I know they don't perform well, but you really should pay more attention to them. They, there's good stuff going on. They're, they're funny. They're amusing. So, let's, okay, that all aside, that all aside, uh, actual point to this video. Um, this, this one is particularly for the game players out there, and what I mean are the role players, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, or D20, Pathfinder, uh, your dice rollers out there, pretty much, because I've just had this little itch lately. See, I used to play back in late middle school, early high school, I think my first game of Dungeons and Dragons was when I was 13, and... You know, and here, 16 years later to this date, I never owned a pair, I, I've never owned a set of my own dice. Like, I always scrounged up just like, okay, my this friend's getting out of it, or he bought a, like a starter set from a rummage sale that only had like half of the parts there, so, well, no, here's a die, here's a die, here's a die. So, I, you know, I never actually had a full set of my own, they were all like unified, one color, all that, until now. And I will show them off, but... I'll, st I'll start in with what got this itch going was a was a bit of a marathon session of Spoonie's Counter Monkey series. And for those who have never seen it, it's basically him uh, vlogging about uh, old roleplay stories he has, really disastrous games of Dungeons and Dragons, or uh, a lot of little tips on playing e either side of the Dungeon Master board. It's it's really it's a, it's really informative and it's a really funny series too, and Spoonie's just a really really good storyteller when it comes to that sort of thing. So I guess it kind of inspired a little bit of storytelling from me and started making me think. Oh, I don't have nearly as much experience, but I'm sure I've got one or two goofball stories. But in one of his more recent ones, he showed a full gameplay from Con Bravo, which has some others from Channel Awesome. Linkar was there, and it was, it was a it's a fun little watch. If, if you've got three hours to watch the whole thing. But he mentioned something called game science dice. And these fascinated me for some reason. Uh, what game science dice are, are sharp-edged dice. 
uh, the difference is the, the, the same way that like Vegas dice are made. And the difference is that they are fair. They roll evenly. And they roll fairly. Your typical die of uh, this type here, which let's see if I can actually get enough on it. No, oh, you know, the autofocus is going to give me annoyance, but you can see what my point here. Uh, you see the rounded edges to that? Okay, that's because these type of dice go through a dice tumbler to take off all of the extra mold flash, the little bit of molding that's from the plastic sprue, a lot of little imperfections, like little scratches and blemishes from when the mold is getting a little too old and starts showing a little bit of wear. Uh, that type of thing uh, usually gets polished off in a rock tumbler. Pa they paint the dice, and they tumble them again, they tumble them with finer stuff to take all the little scratches out of the paint. And what you do when you do that is you're slowly ta you're taking off a bit of the plastic all the way around, but you're not doing it in a uniform manner. So you're going to get dice that have more plastic taken off of one side than another. You're going to get round edges that aren't straight enough and will not bounce the correct direction they're supposed to bounce. There's a lot of little flaws with them. So if you've ever, if a role player out there has ever and I'm sure everyone who's been in a role-playing group has had... You've either been this guy or uh, you knew this guy. Who, every... You could swear that 20-sided die of his hasn't rolled a 20 in months. And you just say, well, it's probably just my imagination. It's probably just bad luck at the worst. It might be because that die is not balanced correctly. And I want you to think back to anyone who's ever lost a character because... You couldn't roll that last saving throw you needed. Or the DM just rolled one too many 20-siders that day. Your character might have died because you were playing with an unfair die. There literally was no way to save your character because the die just doesn't want to roll the numbers that you needed. Which sucks. So Spoonie mentioned these game science dice, and what they are are dice are taken straight out of the mold so that they have straight edges. I'll show you this green one here where you can s again the autofocus is not going to be helpful but hopefully you can see enough of it to see straight edges. They have not been through a rock tumbler at any point. That means they're fair. Even the little blemishes from the molding process which you know you might have to shave down or sand down when you get these uh, aren't going to hurt anything that much. Uh, not nearly as much as the imperfections from the tumbling process. So, 16 years after my very first game of Dungeons and Dragons, I finally have a set of my own that's not mishmash from spare dice my friends didn't want anymore. And as you notice that with that, uh, you notice with that green one, they are all emerald. It's, my camera just really does not want to pick up what a nice color green it is. And you can see gold numbers that are hand painted. These act, uh, you can actually get these blank. So you can paint the numbers whatever colors you want. Which is very cool. And really cool because you can make some neat color combinations. There's a like a fire orange with some white. I guess those are my cream sickle dice. And little oddball ones. This one is just funky. Yeah, that's not a three-sided die. Look at that. That's a five-sided die. And you wouldn't think it would work, but it does. That's the amazing thing. That it just kind of freaks me out that 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 the geometry is correct for that. So more than anything, they're kind of fascinating and they're pretty. You know, and I and I want to pick up some that are a little bit more game friendly. One, you know, opaque ones you can see from across the table and whatnot. But, I don't know, these are just fun. These are just really nice. Like, I want another set of these purple ones. I mean, those just came out really, really beautiful. So, it's a little bit of arts and crafts there, too. It, there's a sense of pride now. Like, I have gaming dice. Like, I feel like a complete geek now. Like, I'm whole. It's hard to explain. It's, it's just one of those itches that I've always been meaning to get around to, and this was just it. You know, and just kind of at the fault of one too many of Spoonie's uh, roleplay videos. Which, as I said, got me in a storytelling mood. And 
this one, I, I guess if I'm going to put a name to the story, it's uh, uh, Don't LARP Indoors. Now, the one t now when I was in my little role-playing group in middle school, uh, we always played at my friend Ricky's house because Ricky had the nice stocked cabinets full of little treats and uh, he had the big dining room table in view of the big screen TV in the living room and the parents' bedroom, which was way across the house, so we didn't have to be all that quiet. But, and Ricky was always, this was Ricky's hobby. You know, he was always the one with plenty of dice, and he was always the one who would pay out for the character sheets and all the big expensive books. So, he was pretty much like the little leader of this group. Now, at the time, I had a friend named Chris who lived near here. Like, uh, Ricky's like one town over, uh, Chris was like, you know, like two minutes from my house. And he could never make it to those game nights, and he always wanted to play. So, I think it was during, I think it was during spring break when I set it up with Ricky with the idea that, you know, you know, both of my parents work during the day, and my grandmother will spend all day at her local watering hole. So, how about just this one time, because my friend Chris really wants to get in on it, one of these games. You come over to my house, you know, we'll spend the night rolling up our characters, and then the next day, we have free range of the house. Completely empty, no reason to be quiet at all. You know, we can scream spells from the top of the mountains, and no one's going to stop us. And, you know, uh, I think Ricky was just as tired of doing these at his house, too, because this was at the time we were trying it at other, other people's houses. So, yeah, he was all in on this, so, you know, that's how we did it. And the game we ended up picking for the night was Werewolf the Apocalypse, because Ricky used to pick up a new book, like, once a month to try out different games. Uh, you, know, D you know, this was during Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, so it was second edition. We, were, uh, we went through the Star Wars RPG, which was fun. Um, we did Vampire, the Masquerade. And I think that one really, I think that's when it, when the group started to splinter. Because I was among this, you know, there's like two or three of us, me included, that could not wrap our heads around being a vampire. Like, basic mistakes right from the get-go. And I just could not get into this game at all. So, the ones who wanted to keep playing kept playing. So, you know, the group got smaller and, you know, that was kind of the end of the role-playing group. So I was trying, so, but Werewolf was fun. Werewolf we got into. And the fun thing about Werewolf is you didn't have to be a werewolf. You could make all kinds of were animals. And they all had different tribe names, and I, I can't remember them offhand. But you had, like, were rats, were bears, which I always like to play on words there, uh, were ravens, which was cool. And what I liked to play, which was a were gator, where you could base, where when you kind of hulked out all the way, you basically became this mini t sentient T-Rex, and it, you just, like, absolutely destroy things. It was fun. So that, uh, that was the fun of that game. So that's the one we decided to play over here, because it's nice and easy for Chris to start getting into. A little bit, a little bit more, I don't think it was quite as complex as Dungeons & Dragons were. So... We were over here, three of us playing up, and we were playing in the dining room table, and, you know, I'm the kind that can't stand to stay still for too long, you know? If, you know, if I'm in the seat for too long, I'm fidgeting, I'm trying to find a new way of sitting, like, under here, you know, I'm, you know I, I can't stand to stay still for too long. So, eventually, we're about an hour in, and I start getting up from the table, and actually kind of more acting out what my character is doing, and I'm talking... You know, more dramatically. It doesn't help that we're all pro wrestling fans at the time, so all of us knew how to ham it up. So, as I'm kind of getting into this thing, uh, Chris is starting to do this too. And then Ricky, you know, kind of chimed into, And all of a sudden, we're all just kind of acting it out. And lo and behold, we had kind of self-invented LARPing before we realized that LARPing was an actual thing. LARPing being live-action role-playing for the people who have never heard that term. So, basically, the entire house became our little area. If our characters moved to a different camp or to another town, we would move to a different room. And it, basically, we'd play anywhere that there was a flat surface to roll dice on. And, our, you know, the favorite parts were 
the bedrooms and the living room because when we got into combat we wanted a place to throw ourselves so we needed something nice and cushy we had nice cushy couches at the time and at the time uh, the bed the, this bedroom was not littered with toy shelves because this was before my collecting really hit off at the time I had not one but two twin beds in here so my house was always the best one for sleepovers because no one had to crash on a couch or an air mattress so this room was like perfect for this type of behavior so someone roll oh 12 and boom, that's what a 12 looks like someone roll 14 oh that's what a four, that's what a hit from a 14 looks like so we're doing this little role playing we're, you know we're acting all this out and eventually uh, we make it to my grandmother's room and my grandmother's room was probably the most useful because it's a solid U of carpet around the bed that's in the center of the room so we had a plenty of walking space around it and if you tumbled onto the bed you went off on the other side whereas here if someone you know tumbled into a bed and you hit a window which would really put a abrupt end to the role playing session I think so during this time we're in my grandmother's room and we're tr we're still rolling you know we're still playing up in our fun and we get into a fight scene and uh Ricky who's playing both minor character and uh being the GM uh rolls the first 20 against one of us and it's me so I just got I just got hit with a crit and my thought is, I gotta make this look good. You know, because remember, a 14 looks like, oof. You know, so 12, a 20 has to look oof, huge. So, I kind of brace myself, and I'm standing, on, I'm standing on the far side of the bed, toward the foot, and I kind of vault myself over the foot of the bed, over one corner, onto the other corner and right after I hit I'm on the floor way faster than I expected to be on the floor and I can hear and as I'm on the ground I can you know making sure nothing on me is broken and I can hear Ricky and Chris behind me go oh crap and it's like and, uh, and I'm stand I stand up and I go no 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 I'm fine I'm fine I didn't hurt anything and I turn around I realize they're not worried about me. They're worried about the bed. Because the corner of the bed is now touching the floor. Now, as I said, we were we were pro wrestling fans at the time, you know, and you know, we used to practice power bombs on each other on this bed. Didn't move. But this one time, I hit this bed just right to completely bend the steel leg of the bed frame completely over and that was that was the first time I was ever when we were you know in my life that you know it was just a group of my friends collectively crapping ourselves because I was not a rowdy kid you know this didn't happen to me like the worst thing I'd ever done which I think was like just a few months before this was an errant ball bounce in the house knocked over my mom's oil lamp and shattered it to a million pieces and that you know I remember how upset she was over that now I've broken the place my grandmother sleeps at night and not good not good in the least so uh, now my parents get home about five o'clock no clue my grandmother could get home at any time and she's the one I'm worried about here uh, it gets to be about 3 30 and at this time Chris has completely bailed you know, just get, get me the hell out of here he won no part of this so it's me and Ricky trying to bend this steel leg back into position and you know I've never you know, obviously I've never been the athletic type and Ricky was a stick. Like Ricky was the type who gave out his sandwich at lunchtime every day because he just he ate like a bird. There's not a muscle on this kid and there's no way we're bending steel here. So 
you know, uh, we're, you know, I, I, <laughs> it's about this time I start praying, and about 3.30, there's a knock at the door, and it kind of dawns on me that this is Ricky's dad come to pick him up, and the first thought in my head is, <laughs> I can't bend this back by myself, I'm about to lose the only help I've got, and then it clicks in my head, and I very cautiously ask Ricky, are you willing to share a bullet with me? Because my only recourse, my only way out of this, was to ask Ricky's dad to come in, and w without putting any blame on Ricky at all, completely ab you know, abdicating him from this, can you please bend this leg back into position? God. It was bad. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. It was one of the more humiliating experiences of my life. But, you know, luckily he had the arm strength. He managed to get the leg bent back. And I don't think my, my parents never found out about it until I eventually told them this story myself. Long after, uh... Long after it was a valid concern that the bed leg had been broken at some point. Bed leg always held up after that, though. I mean, you know, nothing, you know, my grandmother never crashed onto the floor in the middle of the night, so, you know, I, one of the things I got off scot-free is actually relieved to my mom, because as I said, I was not a rowdy kid. And after I told her this story, the reaction was, oh, thank God he did something normal for your age. So I guess it's a weird way to that my to, I guess I guess it's a weird way to break your grandmother's bed and have your mother thankful for it. Just you know, just you no, know, you know, wait wait about fifteen years. You know then you know then it's not so much a horrific story as an amusing anecdote. Which I hope that's what it was here. Uh, it's the one role play story I have. That was the end of role play night at my house. And as I said, the group kind of broke off after that when we started the vampire game. I, I'm entertaining the idea of getting a group together on Skype, and that's not an invitation to anyone out there. This would be, you know, people I directly know only. Because I know a bunch of friends who used to be into D&D, not anymore. Uh, the trick is finding people on Skype that I actually trust with the honor system, because I'm not a big fan of virtual dice. It doesn't have the drama of, you know waiting for that to stop rolling and going, oh, please don't let me botch. The, it's just more fun we have actual dice. It has more fun we have actual players, but depending on how bad the itch gets, we'll see how far I go. So that's about all I've got here. Hopefully there's uh, enough time to get some more reviews done soon. Uh, I really want to get some big things out here because I've got another convention to go to and I'd like to get back on track before then because it's going to be another big stopping point you know, and hopefully I can get a little bit more time and start pacing things out a little bit better here so hope you enjoyed the story and let's hope for the best that more videos will be coming soon